Hello everybody, Gavin McCormick here. Welcome back. Now this week we're talking all about the outer planets. Last week was inner, this week is outer. Now, Dr. Carl, how are you, sir? Dr. Gavin, very well, thank you. I like your beanie, you're trying to match me, I see. Follow the best. <laughs> now, uh, this week we're focusing on the outer planets and things get a little bit different out here. The inner planets, really rocky. The outer planets, we have some gas giants and some really, really cold planets. Can you tell us a little bit about Jupiter, this huge planet? It has a, a storm, a red dot. Can you tell us a bit about this red dot? Uh, the um, red spot has been running for a couple of centuries, about four centuries, first seen by Galileo. And it's sort of about two or three times the size of the Earth. And it is, in fact, a stable weather pattern. Goodness me. And you can see it from a telescope? You can see it with a telescope, not with a naked eye, but an eagle could. Oh, my goodness me. That's huge. Mm. Three times the size of Earth. Now, Jupiter is enormous. You can actually fit around 1,300 Earths inside Jupiter, which is colossal. Um, now, we move on to Saturn. Saturn is famous for its rings. Uh, they're almost certainly made of water ice, overwhelmingly. They go from about 6,000 to 120,000 kilometers out. They're about 20 meters thick, and they're made of rocks ranging from this big to a couple of meters in size. And we're not too sure how they form. We've got two theories. One is bottom up, that they formed at the same time as Saturn. But there are people who are saying, no, they're unstable. And other people are saying that something big came in close and got torn apart by gravitational stresses, which were greater than its own internal structural integrity. Now, these two planets are very special because they're gas planets, gas giants. They are gas giants, not ice giants. And the differentiation is this. A gas giant, of which we have two in our solar system, so it's not a very large sample size. We've got to do better than that, kids. Uh, a gas giant is more than 90% hydrogen and helium. The ice giants, the next two out, Uranus and, uh, and Neptune, they have about 20% hydrogen and helium. When I look at Jupiter and Saturn, they look real. They look like I could land on them. If I was to take a spaceship with a spaceman or an astronaut, could I land on Jupiter? Jupiter and Saturn have got kind of the same formation. Uh, a small, rocky, icy core surrounded by liquid hydrogen and helium, surrounded by gaseous hydrogen and helium, surrounded by just sort of, uh, then on top of that, you've got other sorts of crud, like a bit of methane, a little bit of methane, a little bit of ammonia, but not much. So you're telling us that if I went to land on it, I wouldn't be able to, I'd actually go, have to go all the way to the center. And you'd get squashed by the pressure. Oh, goodness me, it sounds like a terrible place. No chance of living there. Now, we are in South Georgia. We've yep. just come out of the Antarctic and it is cold, it is windy. We move out of Saturn and we get into the big ice giants at the back of our solar system, yep. Neptune and Uranus. Yep. And these are very different planets altogether. Mm -hmm. They're not made of gas anymore. These ones have some matter to them, is the, that right? Well, they're, they're, they're mostly gas, but it's only 20% hydrogen and helium. And then there's uh, water and hydrogen, uh, sorry, water and methane and ammonia, and uh, they have carbon and oxygen and nitrogen and other things in there as well. They're a real mix. Now, on Earth, we have an axis. We're tilted on our side, yep. and we have seasons because of this, and we know that the Antarctic and the Arctic, because of this tilt, they have six months of daylight, six months of darkness, which is fantastic. We come to Uranus, something very unique about its tilt. Yep, instead of being vertical relative to the sun, or tilted a little bit like us relative to the sun, it's on its side about 80 degrees and it rotates backwards. A bit like Venus. Don't fully understand what's going on. So much more to learn. Maybe you'll be the one who finds out why. Now it has a special moon. Is that right? Is there a moon? Because our telescopes aren't that good, all we've measured is about 14 or 10 or so. But when we get closer, I'm sure we'll find more. Now we go out further and further out to the back of the solar system, we hit our final planet. Neptune. We hit, we hit Neptune. Uh, Neptune must be cold. Why is it so cold there? Uh, it's cold because it's a long way from the heat of the sun, but it also is incredibly weird because it might have a rain of diamonds. Now it's raining here today. This is uh, water, H2O. This is water, yeah, yeah. H2O. But, but the, uh, the methane can go through a complicated reaction, and they've done the chemistry where it could turn into diamonds. And this is partially driven by an unknown. Let me emphasise: we do not know, but there is some why there is some sort of internal heat source inside Neptune. So this could be driving the hypothetical formation of diamond rain, but the measured and confident uh, 2,100 kilometer per hour winds. That's right. Fastest winds in the solar system. That's right. Fastest winds in the solar system. It also has a very special moon, which is extremely cold, minus 235 degrees. Ah, Triton. Yes, Triton. Do we know why it's so cold? Um, 
I don't know, or you need to talk to a planetary scientist. So get a job at JPL in California. They're the people, they know that sort of stuff. Right, now, my personal favorite of the outer planets mm -hmm. is Jupiter. Yep. It's so big, it, you can fit 1,300 Earths inside it. Yep. it. Obviously, it's you know it has a great gravitational pull. They call it the big brother of the solar system because it attracts lots of meteors. Do you have a favorite? Well, I do like it because it sucks in lots of big rocks that would otherwise maybe hit the Earth. Kind of fond of Saturn because it's got the rings. I'm kind of liking both Jupiter and Saturn, and this is wussing out, because between them, they have three moons with underground oceans of liquid water. But just me. Now this week, we want you to continue your research on the outer planets. Obviously, I have my favorite. Dr. Carl has maybe two favorites. We want you to choose your favorite. And when you've decided, do your research and do some research around where the planet lies, what it looks like on the surface, the core, the material it's made from, and maybe the history of this planet. Now, finally, now you have all eight planets of the entire solar system. And remember, Pluto's gone. We want you to make a very small eight page booklet. Each page is going to be dedicated to one of the planets with some small information. And when you have finished, you're going to color it in and pop it in the library so that somebody else can learn from the knowledge that you have gained. And you're going to pass that on Dr. Carl. It has been a pleasure once again. Thank you, Dr. Gavin. And thank you, Steve. Goodbye. Soon.